It's assisted with a testimony on the Mount of Olives today. And uh, Miss Hope, aka Hope on a Star, she's kind of not really wanting to work today, but um, she doesn't eat unless she does her job. You know, most people kind of need to learn that, don't they? No work, no eat. But I tell you what, Lord. I give you glory, I give you honor, I give you praise. And I thank you, Father God, uh, for this beautiful, cooler weather. And even cooler than that coming in. And Father God, I just praise you today and thank you for grace and for mercy. That we continue, Father God, to be a part of your kingdom. Lord, you allow us such mercy. Father, I just thank you and praise you for your word. Lord, let them that have an ear to hear hear what thus saith the Lord, and let these seeds of encouragement be planted. In Ephesians chapter 6, verse 9, it says, And let us not be weary in well doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. So, saints, I just want to encourage you today about that principle law of whatever you sow, you will reap. If you continue in the work of the Lord and you do not allow the enemy to weary you, you and wear you down you're eventually going to reap the benefits of the sowing that you've been doing uh, again if you reap anything that you have sown it is going to be what you have sown uh, God is not mocked whatsoever a man sows that man shall also reap the same so I'm hoping and praying Father God that we are sowing seeds of goodness and kindness and love and and we'll have a harvest of of love and just pointing people back to you the harvest is plenty the laborers are few we've been told pray for the laborers pray for the laborers we weren't told to pray for the harvest the harvest already here saints so i want to talk to you today about not being weary and well-doing but i want to take you to the parable of the widow and the unjust judge and um, after going to traffic court this week not not because I got a ticket I went with somebody else they got a ticket and they decided um, you know I am not guilty this is just not right and I'm gonna go and plead not guilty and um, in that uh, in that place of pleading not guilty you're given a bench trial with the, the judge that that you came before to plead guilty or not guilty and um, as I was sitting in the traffic court for two and a half hours the other day, I was like, wow, there is just really no respect for the law. There is no respect for the judge. Uh, people coming in there, they haven't brushed their hair. They don't look like they've taken a bath. I'm like, saints, come on. Even if it's just traffic court, you still have a judge and you're supposed to honor that court. And there's a judge on that bench that deserves respect and honor. And I was watching all this play out, and I had prayed that we would get a just judge, because you never know. Um, we went to um, Sevier County, uh, Arkansas, D. Queen, Arkansas. And the way that the, the officer um, acted in this uh in this episode I'll call it an episode because it, it just doesn't does not sound right when an officer is irate and upset and accusing you of things that you know you didn't do and uh, pulling you over for something that no that's not the way it happened and that's just not true so you get to thinking oh camera oh we're a little closer now you get to thinking that maybe you're going to a kangaroo court or, you know, you're going to pay the fine anyhow and they're just out for money. So you don't know, so you go to the Lord and you're like, Lord, we want a just judge. So the other day, I literally was praying for a just judge. I didn't even think about the scripture until later when I was praying about it after I'd seen the judge. Her name is Manya Woods in Sevier County, Arkansas. And it's uh, the name of the town was D. Queen, Arkansas. I got to watch this lady and listen to her and she was so gracious and so just and so honorable and just good to people, giving them chance after chance. I mean, there was one guy that had been up before her. It was his sixth offense for driving under a suspended license. And I'm like, and you had old people and 
very young people and all people in between and of all different races. And I was like just so excited about the fact that this woman, this judge um, sitting on the bench was fair. And she was no pushover either. Man, judge Mania Woods is no pushover. She sent one gal to jail. She said, I've had enough. You know, it's time that you woke up. And I'm like, yes! But the magnitude of the people coming in there with no respect and honor for the judge. So in the 18th chapter of Luke, we're going to speak real quick about the parable that Jesus talked to uh, about the unjust judge and the widow. And he spake a parable unto them to this end, that men ought always to pray and not to faint saying there was in a city a judge which feared not god neither regarded man and there was a widow in that city and she came unto him saying avenge me of mine adversary and he would not for a while but afterward he said within himself though i fear not god nor regard man yet because this widow troubleth me i will avenge her lest by her continual coming she weary me and the lord said hear what the unjust judge saith and shall not god avenge his own elect which cry day and night unto him though he bear long with them I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on earth? Now, saints, I want you to think about this parable uh, maybe a little differently than you ever have before. I'm not sure. Because we probably all heard this parable in different ways. It's been preached in different ways by different people from different pulpits. I'm certainly coming to you from a different pulpit to, today, the Mount of Olives, a.k.a. Hope on a Star. So this is what I was thinking. You know, being in traffic court, going before a judge, we didn't know if we were going to get a just judge or an unjust judge. I prayed, I asked the Lord, Lord, all I'm asking for is to have a just judge, an honest judge that will hear the plea of not guilty, and then when the trial comes, hear the truth and be able to discern what the truth is. Uh, not just because a highway patrolman said it, but because she's listening with just ears and an honest heart, and she discerns the truth of the situation. So I know that justice will be served, guilty or not guilty, fine or no fine, we have an honest judge, Manya, Judge Manya Woods in Sevier County. I'm just so thrilled to get to have watched her and the way that she treated people with respect and honor and dignity, even when they were dishonoring her. And she could have, she could have held some people in contempt, I promise you. If you ever want to have fun, just go to traffic court for a couple hours. Oh my gosh. Well, you'll understand why, why things are like they are in this world. You know, they, they get told to not have cell phones on, not to bring drinks in the in the courtroom. They do it anyhow, they don't care. I'm like, really? So anyhow, long story longer, um, I was talking to the Lord about that very thing, about, you know, thanking him for the just judge. Remembering this parable about the unjust judge, he did not fear man. He, I'm sorry, he did not fear the Lord. He wasn't a believer, and he did not regard man. So he could he really was sitting on the bench. He could have cared less. He just wanted to get people in and out. There was no compassion. Just get them in and out, hurt them in and out. He was not just. He was not honest. We know the only true judge that is completely honest is the Lord God Almighty, but he does have men and women of God sitting in um, courtrooms this day and age that are just and are honest and will give you a fair shake. So when I was talking to the Lord about this, it's like, this is simply enough for me to understand that this day and age, the enemy's going to wear you down. This widow kept going back to this unjust judge and she kept trusting the Lord to exonerate her and to give her justice. She put her faith and trust in the Lord, even though she was dealing with an unjust judge. And she kept going back to this unjust judge saying, hey, when are you going to give me justice? 
we know that the Lord is going to give us justice when we cry out to him. He is going to exonerate us. He is going to show that we're not guilty, and he is going to eventually give the verdict of not guilty in, in front of everyone. You know, it doesn't matter how weary you get in well-doing, saints. If you will trust the Lord, if you will trust the Lord, yes, tell him, Hope, if you will trust in the Lord, he will avenge you. He will give you that proper verdict. If it is due you, the Lord, in due time will exalt you if you humble yourself before him. So this woman kept going before this unjust judge, and at the end of the day, he finally gave her the, the verdict that she had been praying and asking the Lord for. Because remember, saints, the enemy is going to work on us. The enemy is going to try to weary us down. But you know what? We can keep continuing to come before the Lord and not giving up in prayer. He is going to avenge us speedily, saints. Okay, but we can't give up. In the meantime, we can't give up our works and our prayer and our fasting and our coming before the Lord just because you don't see the verdict right there. The Lord is working behind the scenes for you. He is the only just one. And if you will put your trust in the one just one, you're going to get the victory. It's already been given to you. But on the flip side, do not weary in well-doing. The enemy is going to come at you and try to weary you and wear you down. The Bible says in Daniel chapter 7 verse 25 that the enemy is going to continually just wear the saints down. So he's going to come at you, and he's going to come at you, and he's going to keep coming at you. You keep going to the Father, the one just judge, because if an unjust judge will finally weary and, and do what is right, we don't have to go to the Lord thinking, okay, you're not giving me a fair shake. We know we're going to get a fair shake. It's the enemy that turns it around to weary us, to wear us out, so that we'll stop praying. We'll stop fasting. We'll stop going to church. I had a young lady come last week at the yard sale. She said, I've lost my faith. I prayed. I fasted. I did everything. God did nothing for me. I said, the devil is a liar. The devil is a liar. Wake up, saints. If, if the widow can go to an unjust judge and he has no fear of God and no honor in him toward man. No, he's, he just could care less about people. Eventually she wears him down. He's going to do the right thing. God will do the right thing every time. But on the flip side, the enemy will seriously and continuously try to wear you out so that you give up, so that you give in, so that you sin so guess what? You'll think it's the Lord not doing what he said he would do. The enemy will try to convince you that you're not, you don't have a right to, to what you've asked for. The Lord said that if you ask, you shall receive. And if you stay in that right relationship with the Lord, no matter how many times the enemy comes at you and attacks you and tries to weary you and wear you out, keep the faith, saints. It's a faith flip side of the coin. You got the good and you got the bad. The enemy will look at the Lord's word. He'll look at the Lord's tactics and he'll counterfeit everything good and then turn it around and twist it and make you think something totally different. You got to stay in the word. You got to stay before the one true just judge, which is God, the father, the son, and the Holy spirit. We've got to stay in communion with the Lord in this word, saints, in this word, this is where your answers are. This is where your victory is at. This is where the glory of God comes from. This is where our hope is, saints, right here, you, you, right here. So do not weary in well-doing, Galatians chapter 6, verse 9. Understand the enemy's going to come at you over and over and over again. The enemy's going to keep coming. He's going to keep coming. Uh, that's his job, is to wear you out. So if he can wear you out and get you in a place of doubt and unbelief, you're going to give up. 
And then you're going to look at God and say, you know, you didn't do this or that for me. You, you, and that's that's how the enemy gets you. In the art of war, the book Art of War, if you study your enemy's tactics, counteract his tactics, know what they are. Be not weary in well doing, saints. Don't allow the enemy to give you bait, and then you take the bait. Because once you take the bait. Once you take the bait, he's won. Okay? So, pardon the technical difficulties this morning. And Miss Hope, you know, she needs a little prayer this morning. I'm going to go ride her a little bit more. I haven't ridden her in several days, and she's wanting to eat. So, she has a mind of her own. She's like, I want to eat. I don't, I don't want to stand here today. So, saints, I'm not going to weary her wearing her out riding her today because I haven't ridden her in several days but I'm just going to take that edge off so saints get before the Lord and take that edge off let him hear your needs your supplications, your prayers the Lord knows what you need already but he needs to hear your voice the enemy's going to come at you and continue to attack you da 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 and you're like, wow, you know, I'm tired of this. And you finally give in, you sin, you stop going to church, you stop praying, you stop fasting. Come on, saints. You're smarter than that. You're better than that. You know the enemy's tactics. Don't be weary in well-doing. Go to the just judge first and foremost. And even if you go to traffic court or whatever is going on in your life, pray and ask the Lord to give you justice. And then continue to ask him until you see some results. He heard you the first time. You're not wearying God out. You're just reminding him, hey, you know, I need an answer to this. You know, he might come back and say, you need to fast, you need to pray, you need to clean up some sort of sin in your life. The Lord will talk to you if you'll just listen. But most of the time, we're not listening anyhow. So God bless you. I love you, saints. Uh, God is the just judge. He's the only one. He's just one. And he's the only just one. So I pray today that you'll not weary in well-doing, that you will continue to go to the just judge. You will learn from the parable of the unjust judge and the widow that if you continue to ask and you continue to pray and you don't get weary in that place of prayer and asking, the Lord has already answered your prayer the first time you heard. Just look at Daniel. He had to wait 21 days to get an answer. You know? Don't give up. Jesus went into the desert. The, the Spirit of God led him into the desert. He was in the desert for 40 days and 40 nights, fasting and praying. At the end of that 40 days, the enemy came when he was at his weakest and attacked him. Okay? Check it out, saints. Jesus put the word on him. Put the word on the enemy, saints. Word. God bless you. I love you. I plead and apply the blood of Yahushua Hamashiach over you to hide, protect, and keep you is the blood. You'll overcome by the blood of the Lamb, the word of your testimony, and not loving your life unto death. God bless you. I love you. It's Sister with a Testimony on um, Mount of Olives. Later.